Welcome back to Reading Java Codes. We are now in Module 2 of this series. This is probably one of the shortest modules that we will have along the way. Anyway, let's get down to it. Java file types. There are three Java file types that you will encounter. Now, in these different file types, there may be additional subset of source files depending on your IDE. As I explained in Module 1, there are varying options and features depending on the IDE that you choose to use. Uh, I will attempt to talk about them a little bit here just so you will have an understanding. Okay, if you look at the image I have down there, I kind of highlighted what the different pieces are as it relates to this Java file type. Project file files this is the file that contains all of the project files this is the first file that is created when you want to develop an application so think of it this way the project file is a container for all the contents within a project which can be image um, a class a source file uh, libraries everything is contained within this project file. So when you copy a project file folder, you are copying the complete contents of the Java project that is that has been or that will be developed. In this folder, you will also have additional jar files, which are called jar, uh, jar files, drivers, or class files. So just keep in mind the project file is the overarching file, which is this one right here, and in Java. It will be a coffee cup, which I guess symbolizes a Java cup of coffee. Anyway, moving on, the source files. The source files are the bread and butter of every application. And you can't have an application without a source file. Because that is where all the code is contained for your program. The logic, the database access, the... Uh, the decision trees, the control statements, um, the, the data flow, the, the system flow, everything is derived from these source files. And what I like to tell uh, beginning students, not saying that you're a beginner, but what I would like, what I would share with them is this. Programming is 10% knowing the commands and 90% creativity. And the one thing that an instructor, a professor, a mentor, or a senior developer can't teach you. They can't teach you how to be creative. That is something that you will have to learn on your own. We can teach you the commands, we can show you the commands, but you have to take those commands and like a puzzle, put those pieces together with your narrative and develop these applications that come to life. So in the case of this, this program here, this is called the Book Club Bank. And basically, this is a, a book club that uses uh, has petty cash, and they want to track it using a, a database application, which this is. Um, here you have the bank form, which contains all the, the routes, the, the account number, the debits, the credits, and all that interesting stuff that makes up this book club bank. And then here you have another source file here, which is the main source file. How do we know that? In NetBeans, we have indicators. If you see this little arrow right here by the document, this signifies that this particular source file has the actual main method contained in it and this is the first actual class file or Java file that is ran when this program or this application is executed so when we run this project this file here is the one that runs this file here is responsible for calling all the other files associated with this project it doesn't call them in any specific order it calls them in the order that they need to be called in so your Java project will always have this a file that is similar to well, that that should have the main method 
And that will be your main source file. Now, a lot of your logic won't be contained inside of this file. Your logic will, will be contained in this file and in this file. So moving down to the next file, which is called a class file, this is similar to a source code file, but it is different in that it does not contain any, it can't run on its own would be the best way to explain it. You can't call this file here independent by itself. This file here has methods, uh, properties, functions, and functionality that this file right here needs but is it is developed outside of it for maintainability and basically using a, a industry term this is considered black black box programming meaning this is written in a black box so basically I could take this here export this particular file by itself and send it to another developer and he can use it in his program if, if he wants to so, you know, not going into that because, again, we don't teach programming here. We're just teaching you how to read Java code. So, you'll have an understanding. And you have this file here, which is not listed. But like I told you, all the various files that, that are associated with this project are contained within this project file. Here we have an image of the beautiful book, in, book club. So, here's an image contained within the package. So that way it can be easily readily displayed with the form. And there's also a data class here, which is also a class file, which does all the database processing in one place. So that way if the database tables ever change, their location change, you make one change here and this file never has to be touched because it will call this function or this class and it will know how to locate all the other information. Now I said I was going to kind of highlight some additional files that, that are not listed here. It depends on your IDE how you create these files, and they kind of give them different names, if that makes any sense. I said when we were looking at NetBeans that the GUI environment is already included within the installation of NetBeans, whereas in Eclipse, you have to install it as a plugin. So as an example, if I wanted to create a new file for a project in NetBeans, it would give me the option to create a, a, a J form, a J class, uh, a J web page. It would give me those kind of functions. Whereas without the GUI plugin installed, you would have to write the code yourself to display or create that GUI. And I'm sure you can imagine if you had to write a, a GUI line by line you would have a mountain of code which is not a problem but it's a little easier when you could drag and drop your GUI and create an interface so that is one of the other additional files uh, you would have within the source file but uh, enough of that getting back to module 2 these are the three basic files that are, are part of any Java application so there's a project file which contains all the files under one umbrella. Then there are the source files that make up the different pieces of the project or the application. And then there's the class files that are called upon from your Java forms or your Java files. It, it has all the functionality and class and methods and all that, which we won't get into in this particular class here or, or series. But just so you know, the files are kind of separated out for one, maintainability, readability, and ease of debugging. So uh, I hope you learned a lot in Module 2. We will move on to Quiz 2 that relates to Module 2, and then we'll move on to Module 3. Thank you, and we'll see you in Module 3. Bye-bye.